Hi everyone, Dick Beardsley here. Fishing scene. Hey folks, you hear all of me talking about fishing weed line fish. Well, that's what we're doing right now. Boy, it feels pretty good fish. Not sure exactly what it is. It's staying hunkering right down there. Nice fish, whatever it is. Well, we're fishing weed lines today, folks, with a jig and a minnow. And when you're fishing the weed lines, it's a multi-species place to catch fish. What do we got here? Let's see. Ooh, a nice largemouth bass. Hey, there we go, folks. All right, look at that. Hey, folks, we're fishing the weed lines, jigging a minnow. You hear me talking about fishing weed line fish, and it's amazing the different types of species you can catch. Nice largemouth bass. I'll be back with more of the fishing scene and fishing the weed lines after this from our sponsor. Hi folks, welcome back. As I said earlier, we're fishing the weed lines today. And now I'm not just talking any type of weed line. The weed line we're using today is a deep water weed line. What I mean by that is it's an area on the lake where like say on this particular lake, the weed line ends, oh, at about 17 feet or so. That's how, uh, how far down the light penetrates, so you got weed growth up to that point. Now, the way you find a weed line is with your graph or with your flasher unit that also shows you the depth, and by getting on the edge of that weed line in deep water, you can really catch a multi-species of fish. You'll find walleyes, bass, as we just caught, northern pike, crappies, sunfish, perch, just about everything will relate to that deep water weed line. The best weed line is one that breaks sharp into real deep water. That way they can access the deep water for uh, an area that they want to kind of just go and relax and get away from things. They can get up into the weeds where they're going to find bait fish, where they're going to find shade. All kinds of little bugs and insects are relating to that. Where there's those little bugs and insects, there's small little bait fish. Where there's small little bait fish, you're going to find the fish that I just talked about. And which, what we're doing today is just kind of working this edge of this weed line with a small jig. And what we're using here we're using a very small jig, an eighth ounce jig, and we're tipping it with a fathead minnow. And by doing that, you're gonna catch, a, like I said, a multitude of fish. Now you could put on a leech, you could put on a piece of crawler. The problem with that is that you end up catching a lot of these real small cracker jack size and cracker size sunfish. But by using a minnow, it seems like the fish you catch are gonna be the little bit larger fish and uh, you'll keep some of those smaller sunfish off your line. And we're just working along real slow, just kind of popping that jig, letting it drop back down, popping the jig, and there's one right there. Don't know what it is. Doesn't feel quite as big as that bass did. Let me shut down my trolling motor here. Let's see, it's no northern. I can tell that just by the way it's fighting. Hey, there we go. A nice crappie. How about that, folks? Middle of the summertime. Let me get that crappie in here. Hey, not a bad crappie, huh? Again, a crappie we caught on the weed line with a jig and a minnow. Crappies are tough to find in the summertime, but if you're wondering where to start, start with a deep water weed line. Let's get this guy back in the water here. It's an absolutely gorgeous day here, folks. We have clear blue skies, a little bit of an east-southeast wind, which isn't the best wind. Temperature is about 75 degrees. Air temperature is about 75 degrees. You couldn't ask for a nicer day to be out on the water. There we go. All right. Yeah, another crappie. All right, not a big fish, but hey, not a bad fish either. You know, folks, it's nice to go after one particular species when you're out there on the water, but it's also kind of fun to get out there and not know what you're going to catch for sure. Yeah, nice crappie, huh? Or a speckleback, a lot of people call them that down south, or a crappie, a lot of people call them that too. There he goes. Oh, we'll get baited back up here. And uh, all we're doing is just putting on a small fathead and uh, 
You know, you can catch all kinds of fish on fatheads. Shiners are nice, but they're kind of tough to get sometimes this time of the year, and they also, they don't last very long in this warmer weather. But we're just taking a, a small old fathead or a crappie minnow, and uh, I've caught big northerns on them and bass and all kinds of things. Just hooking it right through the mouth and out the head, pitching it out there, and just stay right along the edge of those weeds. It's pretty simple. Now you do need to have a locator, you know, a depth finder, and once you learn how to read where the weeds are on there, uh, boy, it's, it's like your road map to where you want to be out there fishing. And we're just working the jig real slow, right along the edge of those weeds. And the kind of weeds that we're looking at right now down there, there's two, two kinds that are in this particular weed line. There's some cabbage, which is a real broadleaf broad weed. And there's also coontail, which if you look at a raccoon's tail, they've got those rings around it. It kind of looks like that. Both weeds are very good. Fish relate to those weeds a lot more than they do that real gunky type of stuff. And the nice thing is you can fish through those weeds. Yeah, you're gonna get hung up on them once in a while, but if you just work that jig through those weeds like that, they'll drop. And you, if there's nothing more tantalizing to a fish when you're pulling through some of that cabbage or that coontail, you get yourself loose and that jig starts falling back down. That's a lot of times when you're gonna feel that fish on. Ooh, there we go. Oh yeah, I'm not sure what this one is, but not bad. Oh boy, he's running with her. Tighten my drag up just a little bit. If you want to err on one side or the other, folks, you want to definitely err on the side of having your drag set a little bit too light. Oh yeah, he's running good. It's hunkering down. It feels, it almost feels like a walleye, just the way it's hunkered down there. Haven't, see, haven't seen him yet. Oh, there, he, there he comes. Ah, another bass it looks like. Oh yeah, not a bad bass, huh? Oh, they are fun to catch, folks. Oh, come here. When they get underneath the boat like that, you want to hold your rod out. And usually what they'll do, that'll pull them back that other direction. Don't even reel when that happens. There we go. All right. Not a big bass, but a pound or a pound and a half or so. Come here, buddy. There we go. Hey, nice largemouth bass, huh, folks? Fishing those weed lines. Yeah, it's a dandy. Get that hook out of there. Oh yeah, nice little fat plump one. We'll get him back in the water.
folks, we're out here in the month of August, what they call the dog days of summer. And what that means is the water temperature is at about the highest point it's going to be. The fishing, it can be a little bit tough right now for a couple of reasons. One, there's so many bait fish down there, and that can be a problem. You know, they got so much forage to choose from. You ask yourself, well, why would they hit on my bait that I'm using? Well, good question. That's why you, know, you, you use different colored jigs, different sizes, different dressings. You can use plastic tail. You can use different kind of live baits. But it's hard for a fish to pass up a jig and a minnow, and here's the reason why. Fish, if they can find some kind of food that is not moving real quick, it's a lot easier for them. They don't have to work near as hard as they do if there's a you know, fast, fresh-moving minnow or some type of small bait fish going by. So if they see all of a sudden an injured minnow coming by, which basically your jig is that, it looks like an injured minnow to them, and it's just kind of hopping along, that's easy prey. Even if they're not really super hungry, they see that, it's hard for them to pass that up. Now today we've got bluebird conditions. Like I said earlier, we have an east, mainly an east wind. And the old uh, fisherman's adage is, when the fish is, or when the wind is from the east, the fish bite the least. And that can be true sometimes. But don't let that keep you from getting out on the water and enjoying a beautiful day like we have today. Water clarity right now on this particular lake is quite clear for this time of the year. Many of the lakes that we're out that you might be fishing this time of year, go through an, an algae bloom where the water gets kind of murky colored. And when that happens, you want to go with a, a jig, like a rattle jig, go back to lift that jig up. Then if you feel anything different than you did when you first put that jig in the water, boy, take up that slack hook or slack line, set the hook. Or if you see your line start to move a little bit, make sure that you take up that slack line and set the hook. A lot of times that's a fish grabbing your bait. Oh, there's one right there. Ooh, this one feels pretty good. <sighs> yep, this one feels darn good. All right, folks. This one's hunkering down, man. He is hunkering down. Ooh, he's taking out line, too. This is a good fish. We're out a little ways from the weed line now, so that's good. This is a big fish. Nice fish. He's getting behind the boat here. Hold on. Nice fish. Oh, man. When they get down in those weeds, if they get down the weeds, folks, what you want to do is you don't want to really reel too hard. What you want to do is put steady pressure on that fish, kind of like what I'm doing right here. Keep that rod tip up and put heavy pressure on there, and eventually that fish will move out of that weeds. Hopefully, that's what's going to happen. Not all the times. It's when you try to horse them out of there. Remember, what I'm fishing with today is six-pound monofilament test line, so it's not, it's not real uh, strong line. So you want to make sure, boy, ah, he's moving right along the edge, right along the bottom of the weeds there. He's got his snout in there. Holy cow. This is, my wrists are getting tired here. This is a good fish. This is a good fish. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I haven't even seen him yet. Holy cow. This is a dandy, folks. Boy, he's hunkering down like a big walleye does. But I'll tell you, big northern pike will do the same thing. You get those smaller pike, and they're going to go twisting and turning on you. But the bigger ones will hunker right down. But so will big walleyes. What do we have? I don't know because I can't see him yet. Let me get my motor turned here and try to keep out in a little bit deeper water. That's the thing, folks. If you get a big fish on, if you can get your boat out into deeper water, that's the key. Try to keep him out of those weeds. Boy, he is just hunkered down on the bottom. Whoa. Oh, there he is. I just saw, I just saw a flash of him. I think it's a big pike. I'm not sure, but I think it's a big pike. Oh, baby. If they start coming underneath the boat on you, what you want to do also is stop reeling and put that rod out. Oh, like that. Just stick it out like this and keep them from going underneath the boat. Whew, this is harder than running a marathon. Okay, he's getting up there now. Yeah, it's a big pike. Big pike. 
Whoa, man, look at this one. I, oh, I can't even get him into the boat. Man, whoa, that jig popped out. Whoa, folks, look at the size of this pike. Man, hold on here, let me get this jig out of the net here. It popped out right when I got him in the net here. Holy smokes. Folks, this is what you call a big northern pike. I don't care where you're at. Hey, this is a trophy northern pike. Look at that, folks. Huh? Big pike. Big northern pike from an area lake. Whoa. Let me see. 37 inches. That is one big pike, folks. Let's get this big gal back in the water. Huh? Look at that pike. Woo! There we go. Well, can't tell what this one is either. <laughs> Not very doing very good on my species of what I got on here, but it's, I think it's a bass. The way the line was starting to come up there, I'm not sure, but let's see, I don't see him yet. There he is. There's a bass. Come on here, buddy. Come here, buddy. All right. Yeah. Got him hooked right in the front of the lip there. Hey. Boy, I'll tell you what, folks. Nice largemouth bass. Fishing in Minnesota, especially along the lakes area here. Hey, it doesn't get any better than this. Let's get this girl back out in the water here. There you go, baby. All right. No harm done. We'll get our uh, minnow on here again. Folks, I'm using a jig and a minnow. A fathead minnow. They're, uh, they're the most hardy minnow this time of the year, unless you go to like a, a red-tailed chub or a crick chub, but uh, unless you want to pay, uh, you know, seven, eight bucks a dozen for them, go and get, a, get yourself a couple scoops of, of uh, fat heads for, you know, two and a half, three bucks for a couple of scoops, and uh, you'll catch all kinds of fish. No kidding. Fish those deep water weed lines. Let me get my line untangled there and pitch, pitch this back out there, and we'll get right along that weed edge again. And, See what we can catch next, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, come on, baby. Pretty decent fish. Pretty decent fish. What do we got there? Looks like a pike down there. Yep. A northern pike. All right. I could use a net on him, but if I can, I'd like to grab him, the smaller ones behind the back of the head there. Otherwise, they can have it. Oh, he looks like he's about ready to jump. Come here, buddy. There we go. Yeah. All right. Come here, pal. Hey, not a bad pike, huh, folks? You're not real big, but boy, they're fun to catch. No doubt about that. They are fun to catch. Careful, though, where you put those fingers. They got a lot of teeth on them. Come here, buddy. There you go. Yeah, all right. There we go. Hey, there's a nice crappie. Get him in the boat here. Yeah. Nice crappie. Good eater size. You want a nice meal of crappies? Yeah.
there we go. Yeah, all right, another fish. Oh, it's coming up like a bass. Yep, there I can see it out there in the water. Oh yeah, he's making a few boils there. There we go. Come here, buddy. Reach down and grab him. All right. Hey, folks. How about that, huh? Hey, we've had a great day out here on the water today, folks. Another largemouth bass. We caught a huge northern pike, some other northern pike, crappies. And you know what? There's a good chance you'll catch some walleyes right along these weed lines, too. Hey, folks, try fishing deep water weed lines. You never know what you're going to catch. And please remember to practice selective harvesting. By doing so, we'll continue to have great fishing for years to come. I'm Dick Beardsley. Thanks for joining me today on The Fishing Scene. I'll see you out on the water.